Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here. I'm joined by my attorney, Jay Kabu. That's the initial J, C A B O U. Jay is the co chair of the White Collar Investigations Practice at the international law firm of Perkins Coie. In our country, there are protections for freedom and limits on power. Ron DeSantis may not like them, he may not respect them, but he does have to follow them. This morning, I filed a suit in federal court to challenge the blatant abuse of power by Governor DeSantis in suspending the estate attorney. There's so much more at stake here than my job. Ron DeSantis is hoping to get away with overturning a fair election, throwing out the votes of hundreds of thousands of Floridians. By challenging this illegal abuse of power, we can make sure that no governor can toss out the results of an election because he doesn't like the outcome. Our suit asks the judge to compel the governor to rescind his illegal order and to prohibit him from taking similar action against me in the future. I'm a twice elected county prosecutor who spent my professional career locking up fraudsters and violent criminals. Without warning, I was forced out of my office by an armed deputy, removed from my elected position, and replaced with a Ron DeSantis accomplice. The governor's authority is not unlimited. He can disagree with my political views. He can disagree with my criminal justice philosophy. He can even disagree with my unwavering commitment to public safety, fairness, and justice. And he can do all those things because he's protected by the First Amendment. But the First Amendment doesn't just protect him. It protects everyone, even those of us he disagrees with. Our country has become so divided. Too many elected officials have weaponized politics to divide us, to the point where people no longer just debate the issues, they fight about the facts. They belittle each other's patriotism and values. But the one thing we can all agree on, the one thing that unites us, the one thing that has made our nation the beacon for hope and freedom throughout the world is democracy. Democracy matters. It doesn't matter what party you belong to, or who you voted for, your vote matters. And no elected official has the right to throw out your vote. The governor has attacked our democracy and it should worry everyone. If the governor's attempt to unilaterally overturn an election is allowed to stand, it threatens to undermine the integrity and outcome of elections across our state for years to come. The danger posed by this illegal act cannot be overstated. That's why we must fight back. Not tomorrow, not during the next election, but now. So many people have reached out to show their support, and I cannot thank you enough for your faith in me and for your commitment to the values of our democracy. If you want to join this fight, go to andrewwarrenfl.com. Again, that website is Andrew Warren fl.com we did not seek out this fight but the law is on our side and democracy is at stake we must win and we will i'm going to turn it over to jay to go through some of the details of the suit and then we'll be happy to take a few questions thank you andrew good morning as andrew said my name is jay kabu and today, on Andrew's behalf, we filed a declaratory and injunctive relief action in the United States District Court that in sum asks that Andrew be restored to his rightfully elected office. As Andrew alluded to, our complaint has two claims. One, as Andrew said, is the First Amendment. The same First Amendment that protects uh, the governor's right to speak out against Andrew, the same First Amendment that protects people to, for, uh, who want to express their views against those that Andrew holds, protects Andrew as well. And the governor's action in, claim, in clearly suspending Andrew from his elected office because of what he said, because of what he thinks, because of his long-standing, firmly held views on things like criminal justice reform and on other topics like abortion and the rights of transgender Americans, those are not bases on which the governor can suspend Mr. Warren from office. I note that some people might disagree with what I just said, and I hear them speaking up here in the room, but what I say is that the same First Amendment that protects your right to speak out protects Andrew too. There's a second claim in our complaint, and that claim asks 
that the court exercised its supplemental jurisdiction over a claim called Quo Ranto, which is testing the governor's power to do the thing he's done. And here what he's done is remove him from office because of policy differences, because the governor would like to do his job differently than Mr. Warren wants to do his job. Just because the governor calls something neglect of duty or calls something incompetence doesn't make it true. It's for the courts to define those words. Courts construe the Constitution, not the governor. We've asked the federal court to uphold that basic principle, and we're looking forward to, to having the court hear our arguments very soon. I'm going to turn it back over to Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Why so in uh, federal court versus state court is state laws and where he's driving his authority? So why file? I mean, you don't want to why file in federal court? Because at its heart, this is about the First Amendment. This is about making sure that even though Ron DeSantis is the governor of Florida, the First Amendment still has meaning. Is your argument, excuse me, is your argument that you should be able to sign any kind of petition, basically, and that's not the basis for removing you from office? The argument is that the governor's executive order suspending me from office violates the law. And let's be clear, the governor has broken two laws here. But he's violated the First Amendment by retaliating against me for something that I said. And he's violated the Florida Constitution by abusing his power to overturn an election and remove an elected official from office without any legal justification. Mr. Warren, can you because, describe the steps you took to avoid lending public resources and private resources with the Florida Republic, the Florida Democratic Party Safety and Justice Task Force. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not, we're not talking. I know, we're leaving. <laughs> yeah. If there are questions about the lawsuit that we filed today, I'm happy to answer them. Mr. Warren, my question is about, um, uh, is this case moving along, and that is, this case, it looks like, at least preliminary, this case has been assigned to Judge Robert Hinkle off the street, a senior judge in the Federal District Court. My question is this, you may prevail here but the 11th Circuit in Atlanta, uh, where Ron DeSantis has filed a lot of appeals to lost litigation, has been a friendly forum for him. Is there a risk that a federal appeals court will, in effect, sanction what DeSantis did and make it much easier for him to do to other people what he's done to you? If there are no guarantees anytime you go to court. The only thing I can guarantee is that the law is on our side, and that if the governor's allowed to do this, what's left of democracy? If the governor is allowed to retaliate against me for speaking out, what's left of the First Amendment? Do you mean to accept that the governor was elected democratically by all the people in Florida? I'm, I'm sorry, the question. So the, you're saying it's undemocratic, but the governor was elected by the people of Florida, and so how are you calling him undemocratic if he was elected? I mean, he's not yeah. tyrant. I agree that the governor was elected in a fair and free election once, just like I was twice. And it's worth noting, by the way, if the governor thinks he can do a better job of being state attorney in Ellsworth County, he should probably look at the vote count. I received 370,000 votes in the last election there. He received, I think, about 230,000. So the governor has no role. Uh, do you have an example of this argument, this First Amendment argument, being successful in overturning the suspension of an elected official? Yeah, I, I, I can't speak to every case in every state that would ever uh, sure. raise these claims. But what I can tell you is that the law is clear that an elected official like Mr. DeSantis cannot use the powers of his office to retaliate against fellow elected officials, in this case, a fellow constitutional officer, uh, to, to serve his purposes. And in that, the First Amendment is clear, the courts have been very clear that the First Amendment protects elected officials just like it protects all of us, and to some extent protects elected officials even to a greater degree, because it is the job of an elected official to speak out on matters of public importance so that the voters who elect them can judge their criteria. Not, it is not, however, the prerogative of an elected official to use his or her office to silence fellow elected officials. The marketplace of ideas needs to remain robust. That's what the First Amendment in part helps to protect. The marketplace of ideas is served by having all elected officials speak out, engage their constituents, engage the voters, and have the voters decide whose policies should prevail as to a particular office. And I would note that in this case, the voters not only elected Andrew once, they did it twice. And Andrew didn't hide the ball. The exact same policies for which he has been removed 
uh, uh, the executive policies that he has espoused and for which he was elected are the, are the policies on which he was now removed. This is a choice that the voters already made. Governor DeSantis does not get to make that choice for them. Are you saying the governor can never suspend a bad prosecutor? <laughs> I, of course, I'm not making any categorical statements like that. My job isn't to defend every prosecutor in every case. My job is to tell you and the courts that Mr. Warren didn't do anything that the Florida Constitution provides to be bases for his suspension. And in this case, the governor oversteps the authority. Well, Mr. Warren, will all of the donors to your legal fund be disclosed and how? How will that occur? Does the public have a right to know who's donating to your legal defense fund? Well, let's be clear. The governor is funding this fight with the state treasury. He's using taxpayer dollars to violate the law of Florida when he's supposed to be serving Floridians. Now, this is a fight that's much greater than me. This is about preserving democracy in our state. That is a fight worth fighting, and we're fighting on behalf of every voter to make sure their vote counts. We're gonna make sure we do our best to have the resources to fight it. And sure, the governor mentioned uh, several cases where you didn't push to prosecute um, criminals heavily as you should possibly. And uh, one of those cases were a man who attempted to kidnap two children uh, and had done so in Alabama two weeks prior. Why didn't you push to uh, prosecute those criminals more heavily? So that case, the prosecution is still ongoing. You know, the governor lives in a political arena where he can say things that are just disconnected from the truth. As a prosecutor, I've spent my career in a court of law where facts matter, where evidence matters, where the truth matters, and the truth will come out in this. And let's talk about the truth. The truth is that in the six years I've been in office, Hillsborough mm -hmm. County now has the lowest crime rate of any county in the Tampa Bay area, the lowest crime rate of any major county in the state of Florida. Our crime rate has gone down nearly 29% over the past several years since I've been in office. Those are the facts. So the governor doesn't want to talk about that. He wants to cherry pick this case or that case because he has to ignore the fact that I'm doing the job that I was elected to do and I'm doing it well. That's why crime is low in Hillsborough County. Just to follow up, you're not going to release your, donor, your donors? Well, we will follow the law as we have always followed. Look, I put my hands on the Constitution, I put my hand on the Bible when I was sworn in and swore to uphold the U.S. and the state constitutions. That's exactly what I've done. It's what I will continue to do. And you're talking about, you know, the law here. Let's be clear. The governor has violated the most sacred law of our democracy, that people's vote matters. You can't just throw out people's vote because you don't like the outcome of an election. So the answer is no. Uh, <laughs> other state's attorneys did not sign that letter about abortion. And in fact, they seem to be pretty surprised that, that you didn't see this coming. How do you to respond to that? So if you're asking me whether I should have anticipated that I would be punished for speaking out freely and exercising my First Amendment right, I mean, think about the, the question. I have the same First Amendment right that everybody, other, everybody else in Florida and every American has. I have the right to speak freely about issues that are important to me. And I'm speaking out not just on an issue that's important to me. I'm speaking out because it's my responsibility as a state attorney to speak out on issues that affect the criminal justice system. That's exactly what I did, and I'm being wrongly punished for it. From your perspective, Mr. Warren, how much discretion does a prosecutor have to make a determination as to whether or not to prosecute a case or not? And where is the line, and, and how much latitude does it, does it contain? I mean, we could spend hours talking about prosecutorial discretion, but prosecutors have discretion, and I've exercised that discretion within the law. And we exercise discretion at every step along the way, from charging decisions to how we prosecute cases, to plea negotiations, to sentencing. That's a prosecutor's duty, not just for the practical reasons of managing the, the huge case load that we have, not just to make sure that we're prioritizing the crimes that pose the greatest threats to our community, which is what we've done, but because prosecutors have an ethical obligation to exercise the discretion. Anything less will be a violation of our ethical duty as prosecutors. Mr. Warren, one right. of the exhibits attached to your lawsuit deals in some detail with the bike stop policy of your office. Can you explain how that's relevant to your case, your policy about bike stops and pedestrians? That was one of the orders, one of the policies cited in the governor's executive order. So we're responding in our complaint to that specific order. 
Did you delete files from your computer before you turned it back in? Hmm. Wow. Yeah. You, you held it for a number of hours. Did, before you turned it back Ooh. in, did you delete any files? I didn't delete any I mean, the, the silliness of the question. I'm allowed to ask a question. You, you are. These are silly questions, and you're Answer. suggesting something that's wrong. Sir? Sir? We are going to wrap this up. Yes. Right, you're you're gonna gonna ask just if you don't have a question. Yes or no? What? I mean, did did you delete files? files? Yeah. Uh, of course not. In fact, when the governor showed up with an armed deputy in my office, I went to preserve files on the computer so that they weren't deleted. I was not allowed to do so. And there's a question about whether those files were saved on my office once the governor's people came in and started touching things in the office and controlling what was happening in the state attorney's office by someone who was never elected to serve as state attorney. Didn't receive one vote for state attorney, the governor did. But he came in, they took control of the office that the people elected me to serve in. So you'll have to ask the governor what his people did, what files were preserved, what other laws were violated when they took control Our of the Our prosecution's now legitimate. Thank you. Our prosecution's now legitimate from that office, sir. 